couple of these tools. Two of the ones that I found a couple of new things that I don't really use, but they look kind of cool. So sometimes you just have to get in and poke around, which um, I tend to do. Yeah, I guess I'll just stand. So this this started with uh, actually Andrew did a version of this, and it started with my discussion in a committee that we needed a class on transaction desk, and that <laughs> the one that Andrew did, while it was good information, you couldn't see the screen on the video. So the transaction desk, the order of this class is a little weird because I want transaction desk to be a separate hour so we can have that recorded separately. So it's not going to be kind of the normal workflow. Um, for those of you that are kind of brand new, there's I know a couple of you that were at orientation. The, Basically, the flex armless is, is one of the obviously main tools that you use. So I've got it on the bottom of the list. Um, Skyslope is where you put the transaction after it's all signed for the broker to review it and for it to get processed and for you to get paid. Um, listing form, uh, the transaction desk is going to replace zip forms and whatever. There were several different options you had if you used that to do e signing. So um, we're going to cover that in the second hour, so I can have that be a separate recording. So it's a little easier for people if they only want to only need to see that as it's new. So my thought is, if any questions you have, I'm just going to kind of walk through some things, uh, how to get to them, features that I kind of like. I certainly am not an expert, but since I brought the suggestion up in a committee meeting, I got nominated to be there. <laughs> so that's how that That'll works. That'll be the last time you speak up. That's exactly right. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, so, uh, so I put a little sheet together, and, uh, and I guess I might throw this in the in the my home group mastermind, so you don't have to like write all this down. But I've got it here on paper so that I can kind of keep myself, make sure that I cover what I can. Uh, we're going to have about forty-five minutes to do this, and if we don't get through all of it, uh, we'll get through what we can. So. RPR is kind of a nice little bonus I think everyone should know about. I'm not really authorized to teach RPR, but we're going to open your eyes to that if you haven't seen that. So it's kind of at the end if we don't get to it. It's kind of where it needs to, needs to be. So we're going to go back here and go into Skyslope. And I think in, you know, everyone probably has a Skyslope login unless you haven't done a transaction yet. A couple of the people have learned. Um, so you know, that, I guess I can lie about. So what you're going to need is a username and a password from Skyslope, and you're going to email Andrea, A-U-N-D-R-E-A. -E uh, and again, I have that on here. If, if I'll attach it to the My Home Group to, to you know, Mastermind today if you want to pull it down and not have to take all those notes. But um, then she'll send an email. And she'll push the button in Skyslope because you signed up. And you'll get an email from Skyslope. Welcome. Here's your here's your signing information. Mine's saved, so I'm not even sure what the password is anymore. <laughs> Probably written down somewhere. So you come to this screen first. So uh, incomplete checklist. If you have things that are outstanding, you can click on that. If you just want to kind of work through all your stuff, um, you know, when the house is in process, like the first one is a new build, there's going to be incomplete items there forever. Uh, this one is just getting through the Binzer process, so it's the kind of late stuff. Uh, this one also just through the Binzer. And this was a sample one I just set up this morning. So uh, that gives you a quick summary to what have you got to get done, where are you behind in, in getting stuff done. Uh, documents to review is for the brokers. And you have input. They're going to see a long list there. When you click on it, you're going to see a list like this. No file stock. So fortunately. That is not in my job description. Uh, so the two main buttons you're going to use are manage transactions and manage listings. So uh, if you're if you have a buyer that you're going to be representing to purchase, where do you think what button are you suspecting you're going to use? Yeah, One of the newbies, just, not some of these used to. Manage transactions. Manage transactions. Yep. So listing would be if you have a listing. So when you click on that, mm -hmm. you're going to see your your list of listings that you have, and you're going to click create a new transaction. So it's going to start with an address. It's going to pre-populate a certain amount of information. Um, I don't know that it's beneficial to watch me type because I'm not the speediest typist. 
so I typed a little of, uh, but every place that has a red star, you're going to complete. There's a couple of drop downs, which we'll talk about when I go to the next page. Uh, year build, you know, obviously that's going to show up for lead based paint. Uh, accepted state, closing date. You're going to hit next. It won't let me do that until I've completed everything with a red star. So it's kind of a wizard that, of course, you should just fill out everything that has a red star and any additional information if you want. So if you look at the property on Quail that's pending, I did some of that typing this morning. So uh, agent, MLS number, street number, offer, you know, sale price, source is a drop down. Uh, if you had a, you know, some kind of a referral or REO account, uh, or no one really has REO accounts much anymore, but um, you were doing farming, you can kind of keep track if you were got this from a farming deal versus a personal referral sphere of influence, or if you were doing social marketing and you got a transaction, you can keep track a little for yourself. Um, office lead, yes, no. Uh, at this point, there's not really an office lead program, maybe has been in the past or maybe will be in the future, where you have, so like maybe, I'm not sure if UX is using that and that's how they capture the uh, the UX is a training program and they have a percentage that goes through the first few deals. Uh, that may be where they capture that, calling them an office lead and have them all in there. I'm not sure that that's exactly why, but generally it's going to be no. So here's the drop downs that we want to talk about for a minute. So I've got traditional sale seller rep, traditional sale buyer rep, which is really what I should have clicked here. Um, dual agency, if it's a My Home Group person, an agent at all on the other side, you will need a, a consent or limited representation signed by all parties, both buyer and seller. Uh, on the helpline, I get calls that have indicated where people haven't gotten that. I mean, they're asking another question, I go, well, wait a minute. So it's a my home group agent. So my first question is, do you have the consent to limited representation form signed? And occasionally I'll get a, no, what's that? So that is the dual agency. Everyone agreed to dual agency. It's a must have. It's like, can be a high penalty and if you don't have that. So uh, just bear that, put that in the back of your mind. That's not really part of the class. So the interesting thing is they've just redone, which I think is great, because um, I used to tell people when you're doing a lease, don't click residential lease, you're gonna get a long form of stuff. Or click residential lease and click referral only down below. But they've added, Rental just showed lease property. I don't know if you've ever done any leases, but generally, if you've got a buyer that, or, you know, a renter, tenant, um, the landlord agent wants to do everything, or the landlord is going to create the lease, going to do everything. You've shown it, and yes, they agree they're going to pay you a whopping 250 bucks. Uh, they're going to want our W9, which we can get on the back office of uh, the My Home Group agent back office, and. They'll send a check sometime after it closes. It's not like escrow where it's two days later, so don't expect that. But you don't have much control over it, so you're gonna wanna check this, because then you're gonna have a really short checklist. You're not gonna be asked for things that you don't have, that you can't, that you gotta figure out how to get. So if you're doing a rental, this is the easy way. You're really not doing a full representation of a, your client, and this is the one to check. So when you look at, I'm gonna check that and show you I'm going to submit that, so it changes the checklist. So if you did it wrong, you can go back and change that. I should have shut my email off so it doesn't ding at me all morning. But Do you have a Wi-Fi number or something that we can send? Uh, yes, I don't know. Do you have yeah, one? I know what it is. I can read it to you. Okay. Oh, good. Uh, 636, F, lowercase. <coughs> 636 F lowercase 6E lowercase. My computer just knows it now, so <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that. So this is the referral. So you see I have an MLS printout, right. tax printout from MLS. That's another question I get. What is a tax printout? Use the monsoon, which we'll look at when we're in MLS if we're not familiar with that. Just print that monsoon record. Who owns it? what the taxes are, how long they've owned it. That's the printout here. So you'll see, not much required here. And you get a commission check. 
So this is an awesome way to go if you're helping a tenant on a rental. Obviously, if you're helping someone list a rental, the list is not as short. But we're going to go back and change that in the transaction so we see a full rental. So I've picked a property and just to have here to play. So we're not entering a buyer broker. We're, we're, we're not repping the seller. We're not going to do dual agency. Uh, we're going to do a traditional sale buyer rep on Quail. And you come down and uh, there's a type sale, listing sold, both listing and sale, or other is a referral. Maybe you had an agent out of state sending you a check. And this is how you're going to register the deal. So when a check comes to my home group for $3,000 from Minnesota, they realize that it's for Jim Plumber. Actually, it would have been from Ohio if it's for Jim Plumber, but <laughs> uh, they, they can match it up to an address that, oh, Jane Doe, uh, Jim Plumber's do this check for Jane Doe's check from Cincinnati. <laughs> so, um, sorry, you get picked on when I know you do this. Mm -hmm. I get picked on all the time. Ah, well. <laughs> uh, so, in this case, we're going to do a sale, traditional sale, buyer rep, so those two match up. Hit next. What I kind of went through, just went past first, is you're going to be, in the next few pages, before you can submit and get a checklist, you're going to have to complete the seller, the purchaser, the title, agent representing the other side. You don't have to put the lender in, you don't have to put the home warranty. Uh, if you know those and you want to have them in a place to keep track of, it's a good place to keep track of it and make sure if someone else had to jump in and help, help you because it's your week to be in Tahiti for a week on the beach. Mm -hmm. uh, they got the information in one place. So it's not a bad idea to keep it in there, um, but you have to have the seller, purchaser, title. Now on the seller, you'll notice the phone number is not mandated, just names, because you're representing the buyer, you're not, you don't know that information. Probably don't anyhow. If you have a second seller, you're gonna click new seller. Well, after you complete this, there'll be a save button at the bottom. We're gonna put a phone number in and uh, we're gonna edit. First time through, you won't have to edit it. It's just going to come up blank, and you're going to hit save after you've completed. If you didn't complete all the red stars, it's going to have the pink message up in the corner <laughs> saying, "Hold on." Uh, if you have a new, you know, seller, second seller, you hit new seller and do the same thing. I'm going to cancel that one. Purchase or tenant. Fred is buying a house today. And uh, he can be reached at 867-5309. You're welcome. You'll all have that song in your brain. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Wilma, of course, is, is going to be on the deal as well. So uh, to save you watching me painfully type, I completed some of that so you get the sense of the flow. Once you've gone through that, there'll be a save button at the bottom. Once you've added the title escrow, Jane Smith is at the best title company. Um, and once you've got all that in, and the agent representing the other side, those are all going to be your red stars that you have to get through. Lender, no red stars. Home warranty, no red stars. So once you have all those, you can hit submit, and it'll bring up your checklist will be ready to go. Uh, not quite. we got to talk about commissions. So you're going to... Make sure your sales price is accurate. Uh, it was a really good transaction there. Offered me four percent on this one, so since it's never going to close, I might as well be dream up a higher number. Why not six and a half? Yeah. So <laughs> if you have someone that you're working with that's referred to you that you're splitting with, this is where you can add them in. And if you pay in a transaction manager, you can put their fee in here. I have a uh, question. You're put, you know. Do you, on the, does the transaction fee still apply for a referral? So there, there, yes, there is a transaction fee that applies on a referral, and I may get this wrong, because I just heard it the other day. It's probably in all of our agreements that are in the back of a drawer somewhere. It's 10% of the referral amount up to whatever your standard transaction fee is. So if it's, if you're getting a $350 rental check, they're going to take $35. If, if you're, you know, there's 199 and 299 plans, so whatever your number is, it's 10% up to that. So if you get a $5,000 check from 
someone out of state that you referred the person back to buy and you get a nice check, they're going to take your 299 out because it's less than the 500. Does that make sense? Okay. I may not be 100% on that, but that's the general scope of a referral. Um, how's it not? I don't know. So the odd thing is they've got the uh, W-9 here, but if you're receiving the money, it's the company paying the money that always wants the W-9 on the other side. So I don't, I can't think when you're receiving the money why you would need a W-9 even on a rental transaction. You're going to need to send ours to them <coughs> because they need to make sure my home group is tax paying or by tax paying um, So once you have that, those numbers look right. And again, you don't have to do less the transaction fee. You just put the gross amount due to you at my home group. And the 199 and the 299 comes out later. So you're not trying to do that math in your head to put that commission amount to. So you come up with a checklist of items. Uh, if they're safe, dark blue is required. Some of them won't, you won't have right up front in the transaction. But before I go to that, well, I'm going to we'll show a couple different ways to do it. So uh, it's required MLS printout. You always want to use the agent printout, not the public printout, because you want the commission showing on it. Particularly uh, you, if you're showing houses, technically before you go out and show, you should save it so an agent doesn't pay monkey business and change on you. But if you come back and you're going to write up, save a PDF of that right away so they don't play monkey business and lower the commission on you. It's happened. Uh, so, if you, uh, so uh, as a for instance, so uh, for this property right here, we're going to do a detailed search, and at the bottom right now, they're paying a two and a half percent commission. So, if, if you want to have that for your record, you're going to want to print that by going to da -da 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 print and private. So the private is the version that you want to print that's going to show the commission. The public obviously is not going to show the commission. So you're going to save that as a PDF. And I'm going to save that. I use a Mac, so the, these keystrokes may not be exact, but you're in our arm list, you can get the PDF. Do you have a question? Yeah, well, if there was a dispute, where, where do you sell the discrepancy? By producing paperwork that showed it, printed when you, at the time that you showed it. At the time that you showed it, the commission due, at the time you showed it, is the applicable commission. However, if you um, don't have that proof, listing agreement, lower the hmm? listing agreement that the seller signed? You don't get the listing agreement. You're the buyer's agent. You don't get to see the listing Subpoena. agreement. Subpoena? Subpoena the other agent. Yeah. Want to go to court? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, your best ammunition is having it. Even though you could go to the associate and do an arm list and say what's their history, they not that does, they don't utilize that. They want you have to have. Your, I went and showed it Saturday, and this is what you were paying on Saturday when I wrote it up. And you changed it on Monday when you got my offer. That's BS, and you're not going to get away with it. Whole other class, and the broker you'll get the broker involved, and you don't make an issue of it up front because you can't not close a deal because of your commission. But then right after that, you get the broker involved and you take that piece of paper and you let John Dyer or Larry send it over to the other broker and say, please send the balance of the money. Thank you very much. So that's just your, your back door. Because some people, it's happened. I've seen it happen. It's happened to me where they try to play my business. Okay, I see where you don't want to get in some kind of confrontation, leaving out the back door. Or whatever. But do you mention it at all up front, or do you just wait till the end? You're not supposed to bring up commission. Don't yeah. whatsoever. You just wait till to the end. Bring it up to Larry or John and let them let them be aware. Let okay. them be aware, and, okay. the, and but okay. you know, I mean, and the reality is, you probably don't even necessarily notice because you go back and look at that number. No, you're not going to see it till you get the settlement statement from the title company. You go, wait a minute, the time out. I didn't get my money. Okay. So you probably don't even notice it, reality, okay. just because it's kind of, you know, you're, you're not going back looking at the commission number again, even though you may go back and look at the MLS printout for things mm -hmm. like checking into showing time for the inspection. <coughs> um, okay, so I'm going to save that as sample MLS, and 
this in the terminal. So I'm going to save, I'm going to upload that one. So you're, I back to the sky slope and I put that under here, I thought. There it is, sample line of uh, And it, so you click on it, it's now right here, sample MLS. Wish I could make that red, but I made it huge, so hopefully it's pretty visible up there. Um, and start upload. It's now dropped that into the pending box, and it's, it's dropped it into the box, and it says pending. If I want to see what I put in there, like, oh, I, I'm not sure I put the one that was signed, I can click, this one didn't need to be signed, but obviously in some other document, I just click the paper clip, and what's uploaded pops up. So that's, that's what's uploaded into that box pops right up by hitting the paper clip. If I want to say something about it, which you wouldn't necessarily hear, but you might. So here's an example. Let's, let's say that that house uh, does not have an HOA. So it's, it's probably you know, a little older house, because as you know, since the late 80s, everything's in an HOA pretty much. But if, if it doesn't, I'm gonna write in here, no HOA, and hit save. So logic would tell you, okay, I've, I've brought that to their attention. They should clear out that required. The challenge is the brokers, when they in the review process, typing a comment won't trigger them to go look at it. I mean, if they saw it, they would see it and probably clear it. But they usually that it'll it'll stay till the end of right before closing when they do their final review and it'll get cleared away. Most people are like hyperventilating because they want to get a clean bill of health earlier. So in order to get a clean bill of health earlier, you need some kind of page uploaded in the back. And you could type on a plain piece of paper, there, this property is not in an HOA, but I have an easier solution. I already have the MLS. The MLS is gonna say it's not in an HOA. I'm just gonna upload the same document in, this, in another place, and mostly it's just to trigger the brokers to see that no HOA comment and then they'll clear it out. So that makes sense? Because that the other place that's gonna come into play is the lead-based paint. The house was built in 2003. I'm gonna go in and just upload the MLS, which obviously has the build date in it. So rather than taking effort to create a piece of paper that makes a comment, just, we're just gonna do the MLS uh, and, and then, you know, built in 2004, which it would have an HOA, so that probably, that both of those aren't gonna be this, the same scenario, but, so clears two of those, and as you get those questions, like how do I get rid of that, and it, you know, the comment alone won't do it until the very last review. Uh, the next thing I wanna show you, obviously there's a number of other things, oh, tax ownership, people uh, ask what is a tax ownership question, I get that question. So part of my goal is to answer questions that I get fairly often on the agent helpline. I am the guy behind the curtain. Um, so if you are in the Jones Avenue project and you go to Monsoon, so it's got the property owner's name, it's got the acreage, the structure, the deed history, tax assessment history, that is the tax ownership. We're gonna take that and we're gonna print that. Um, I don't know if, what system you have, how to, you'll wanna have some kind of a PDF, print a PDF feature. If you have a uh, PC, you'll wanna find a program that'll do that. Uh, so a PDF printer, so you're in here, so you, that might be something that you select here. Um, in a Mac, it's built in. Save as PDF. I think PCs have it built in, well, Word does for sure. I'm sorry? But I think PCs have that built-in word does I, for sure. I haven't been in it for so long that yeah. Okay. You, so. you'll leave that function a number of times in your life to, to be relatively paperless. Because um, I do get the call, so I have to print that out and then do that. Well, <laughs> hey, can you not Probably that not, but <laughs> so somewhere in here I put that sample. Oh, I'm saving it now. So I'm doing the uh, sample on. So I printed that sample monsoon. I would go in here and upload that into tax ownership. 
same way, upload document, sample monsoon. So I've got that in the tax ownership. Um, when you get a document that looks like So I've got this full offer document. It's got my contract. It's all signed by everybody. It's gone back and forth. It's all yes. I have a question. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry. Um, to the quick, it's like a backtrack question. So I was just wondering what the difference is between like when you don't have HOA and when you don't meet the various P. What is the difference between putting uh, the, the MLS listing and just clicking the little button that says not required? You don't get to click that. If it says required, the broker has to clear that. Oh, oh okay, because there's a little button. There is in mine because I kind of have, because I'm doing some mentoring, I kind of have those. You oh, won't see so that on yours. I apologize. Okay, I just yeah. said on I, I have, I don't do any of the reviewing, but I have that functionality because I was set up on a, for a mentoring setup. So I have. That capability, but yeah, we don't have. Okay, she got it. Have so that. <coughs> so yeah, I, that would be make my files really easy. I just could have mine. Not right. I was like, not <laughs> <laughs> okay, Review it. Yep, yeah, accept it. We're not privy to that. Got it. Thank yeah. You. I, <laughs> sorry about that. I forgot about that being slightly different view. Do you have questions right there? No. Okay. No. So, kind of a neat, neat idea, but you won't have that. <laughs> um, that's what the broker will see once you've uploaded the, the document. He'll click on that real quick, not request, rather than accept it. Um, so this has multiple, it's got my HOA, it's got everything in one. And that happens fairly often. And you can either meticulously do, you know, print to PDF and print page one through nine, and then page 10, and then page 12. But there's an easier way to do that. Uh, so I don't know if any of you have done that before. But if you, it's not in the transaction, you're going to come out to Working Documents, <coughs> Personal Docs, and you're going to upload the document, browse to it, and open that. So you'll see that, and then start upload. Same kind of upload and then green by the start upload that you have in the checklist. Uh, you'll see that I have two versions of it because I did one earlier, but I decided to walk through the upload process there. Split is the fancy little program you're going to use. So you can come through here and say purchase contract. And I'm going to be one through, you scroll down and find out your last page through 10. And then add a row, HOA is 11 and 12. <coughs> Why it doesn't like me? Okay. See, it, it won't automatically assign if um, it doesn't pull it up. And for some reason, HOA does. So this is the buyer's agency typically because you get it. I mean, you're, this is in the first offer that was made. Uh, I'm representing the seller in this time in this transaction, but um, let's see. Let's see disclosure and election. So that's all of them. So the I'm not going to hit split here because I I don't want to make sure it doesn't go into the actual live transaction I have, <laughs> which was this document that I'm showing you to split. So it shouldn't. I'm going to hit it at the risk of messing up. So I split out four documents. Uh, so it just listed it in my documents. So now I can go back to the 
of action. On 12 were Flintstones. Go back to my checklist. Now closed. Um, and now I can go get the purchase contract and attach. Ooh, I hope they didn't go. Sorry about that. It's challenging for me to try to do a sample thing when I'm so used to doing live. So I hope I didn't mess up my. At any rate, those are two multiple ones in my other contract. Um, please do the reader. Money is going to come in usually in a day or two separate. So, okay. working documents, office docs. See the document. So. Instead of going to working doc, that, that's what I did wrong. I apologize, back up, cut the tape. So I'm going to go into the transaction for Fred Flintstone. I'm going to use this document button instead of that general document button. So if I upload it in here, if I upload that same document and split it here, it will put it in those boxes in Fred Flintstone. the same way, it will then allow me to assign those documents right from that split. So once you're in the transaction, use that document button, upload your multiple page, and when you split it, you can assign it right there. Uh, working documents, the main place I go here is under office documents. We have a, a PDF of commission instructions, but more useful is the uh, Word document so that you can edit it. So you can type different things like you want to make sure the address is now this address. You can just check as quick as possible. You want to make sure that it can, came as a download. I opened it in Word. But you're going to type in your information about the deal. Um, this is where you might have maybe you're giving a Six hundred dollars to a home warranty. There's room for you to put under your my own group uh, agent contribution of six hundred dollars to home warranty, and then the title company will pick that up, make that credit, and make that charge. Uh, in, if you're doing that, you're still going to put the full two and a half percent due my home group, and then a subline that says agent to contribute six hundred dollars to pay for home warranty underneath, and the title company will make that deduction from our full commission. So there is in the back office a PDF of the commission instructions, but it's a lot handier to use the Word document because you can make more changes and make it fit better. Uh, there is a seller in possession agreement, not my favorite, and uh, so that's post possession or pre possession. We don't have a form because the brokers hate that even more, and that's if your buyer wants to move in before they close. All sorts of things can go wrong with that. Um, if you want, if you're gifting commission dollars at escrow, you can do that. Uh, flying, you know, maybe you're helping your brother buy a house and you want to give them, you know, one and a half percent of your commission. <coughs> you can do that with this. Make sure the lender knows about it early because that is part of the underwriting process. So some people try to do something like this right at the end of the day. And in today's mortgage world, that means it has to go back through about five days of process. 
it has to go back to the underwriter after it's underwritten it has to get the le whatever that form is re-signed three days before documents can be signed so you can't you can't gift a commission at the last minute and expect the deal's going to close on time now if that's the only way the deal's closing and they need an extra eight hundred dollars to close you do it and you wait the days it just is what it is and you, you're just going to have to explain that to the seller we can't close on thursday but by monday we'll be able to close and, yeah. um, rejected offers is here but i will tell you we don't put them there here's the easy thing mhg at skyslope.com so if you have rejected offers send it there and i've gotten through none of my checklists i want to show you and i've got the other class coming in so i've got about 10 minutes so i want to show you a couple things in armless uh, i'm not going to go through the client searches and portal setup i'm going to assume that you probably have done some of that or can can see how to do that for you know in armless's videos pretty good but one thing that i see that people kind of miss because it's tiny this little drop down button and i need to go to one of my listings because it only works on your own listing why, why is it oh here it is so my active listing so on my active listing and the person says Obviously, you can do showing time requests on anybody's listing here. Uh, you can get to transaction desk, which will be part of this afternoon's to the next session. Um, you can go to edit the listing if you, instead of going up through the menu function, you can edit your own listing right here. Uh, listing activity is what I wanted to show you, though, because a lot of agents don't know about this. It's very good feedback to your client particularly if you have a listing and you're feeling like you're not getting much action and you need to explain to them why they need a price adjustment. If you can actually send this by to them weekly, it shows, you can do it by date range. So let's say you do do a price reduction, you can then go and do the date range after the price reduction to see if it's had an improvement on the amount of showings, uh, amount of people viewing it. I always tell people it's important, you know, yeah, it's great that your listing got 300 views on Zillow. Before someone's buying, they're talking to an agent in almost every case. So the number of people seeing it on MLS is the important number. The people seeing it on Zillow are just, I was kind of dreaming, you know, I was, it was 2 a.m. and I didn't have anything else to do, I couldn't sleep. So once they get in here, they're going to either be looking in Flex MLS, a Flex email, a portal or an iFlex IDX. Not a lot of Flex IDX users, so that number is usually pretty small. Um, you, where are people viewing it? You can see where they're viewing it. So Flex email, they're seeing the email come out for new stuff in the area. Uh, there's agent or getting it, sending a link on Flex. Uh, four people have saved it. Five people have hidden it. Uh, one was, uh, one person was <coughs> it. So, or, or, now it's set, got seven shares. So this is a listing I have. Once they have some saves, four saves up here, you see this first section. People who save this listing also viewed, are also saved, so you can see who your competition is, what the price point is, what the size is. Gives you a really good idea of who you're competing against. Um, doesn't have the, yes, Jim? What about like a personal website with the, you know, with the IDX and then you have a client just looking at my personal website and then they see a listing they like and they save it. Is that, is that part of the statistics in that? If, if it's not, no, this only has, this is just Flex IDX. Unless you're using the Flex IDX on your personal website, then it would. But if you're using IDX Broker or some other thing, it's not gonna show the save. Unless you're using the Flex IDX, which is an add-on product. And the weird thing is, Armless, tells you almost nothing about that additional flex product they only s subscribe to the main armless the main flex product and flex has all these other services that armless does not train on does not advertise it's out there few people have it um, I actually still pay a subscription but the website I had it on is closed so um, so this is only people viewing it in flex of some form through, a, through an armless flex. And then you can see people who viewed also viewed. So and even if people haven't saved, you're gonna see that. So this is helpful to show someone, hey, 
everybody that's viewing your property in the same square footage is looking at houses priced less than yours except for one house at 429 two there's two at 450 so i need to convince this person to have a price adjustment um, so i'm going to use some of this data to be, uh, da, 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 da. list views um, I wanted to show you a list view real quick. I'm going to save search. Uh, well, this is a long one, but so I have a save search on my home group active. So if I'm looking for a house, recommend you do that. If you're looking for a house to sit open house or you know advertise to get you know some traffic to a Facebook ad or something, uh, you, because it's the brokerage owns them, you're authorized to do that. So you could, I had this whole list, 681 current active properties. Obviously I'm not wanting to do a $45,000 property in Superior. Um, usually the first place I start is go to edit search. I go to uh, map, I gotta zoom into, and I'm like, okay, I really, not a West Valley person. I wanna do a map search. I'm gonna do a, what, is, what, what do we got going on up in this area? And then I'm gonna go look at the list. So I'm now down to 178, but I'm like, you know, I wanna try and advertise or do an open house on a property that's more recent to the market. So in this client view button up here, there's a residential view, which has some handy boxes. Uh, you can find out who's, who's listing it. Um, but more important, I think, is the CMA, because you've got the Asian days on market and the uh, cumulative days on market. If you click on that button, which you can do on any of these at the top, by the way, and sort sending, you can sort by any of these blue items at the top if you didn't realize that, if you have a longer list. So now I have the one day on the market, the two day on the market, three, these are the, these are the new listings in that circle that I drew for my home group. So kind of handy to have that. Uh, Armless classes, it's just armless.com slash classes and they have webinars and so, you know, more good information on that. Uh, rejected offers checklist. Showing time, uh, I wanna, I mean, we all probably use showing time to look at a property. If you have a listing, you're gonna wanna go into showing time and you can set your listing up. If it's vacant, you can set it up to automatically reply, go show. Um, by clicking listing setup and then clicking on your listing. If you have a you know four hour requirement to show, you can just plug that in here so someone can't even send you a showing time within that earlier window. Uh, if, your, if your client says, I've got company coming in for the weekend, you can block it out in here. Uh, I had someone who had an infant and they didn't want two to four o'clock in the afternoon nap time showing, so we blocked it out in here. Very handy. Um, the other thing that is, is reports. So uh, obviously you can do reports to send to your clients on listings you've shown, but if you have a buyer and you're trying to either for buyer or seller, but let's say I I'm, want to see between 325 and uh, 325 and 450 increments of $50,000 and I want to search for Tatum Ranch. So there's more choices you can put in there. So you can see who's, where, this is the number of showing time requests by price range. You can do $25,000 increments, uh, and let's go up to 500. Uh, the data was a little more interesting when it went up to 500. I didn't still for should have gotten the increments over 500. Um, so you can find out what price range are people are really looking at and where your competition is. Kind of handy whether you're representing a buyer or your seller. In my case, my seller's price is a little high, and there's this big void of listings in the price block she's in. So I'm going to do this later, send it to her, and go. And we got to drop the price by, and you know, to get down into the price that people are looking at. Uh, so. Handy, hidden, thought I'd show that out. Um, monsoon we talked about, because uh, 
I want to just make sure you all know where to find Monsoon. If I'm looking at a detailed property, it's going to show up here, a Monsoon here, or you can click on the top. It's handy to go up here if you, uh, you know, want to know, does Craig Harlan own any property in, in the area? Um, so right now I'm renting my house because I sold it, but I do own my cabin, so there it is. So it's really a, most of Arizona. I mean, this is not Maricopa County, so you'll pick up properties in Arizona uh, that French people own. So if you're dealing with a buyer and you wanted to check them out, you can find out they own something already. That's neat, so um, RPR, not enough time to really go into that. Uh, how has anyone <laughs> used RPR in here? Find a class, go learn on it. It's very handy when you're in the field to use the RPR mobile because you can do a really quick comparable, you know, you're walking through a house, you have a showing list of six houses or so, you don't go comp each one before you go show it, you comp it when you're gonna go rent an offer and make sure your offer is right. But you're in the house and the people go, does it seem price right to you? I don't know, I pull out my phone, I put, plug in the address, I run the quick comp thing, and it's a statistically accurate, better number than Zillow because it uses the MLS data, which you know, uh, Zillow doesn't have, they only have tax data. So you get a pretty good idea. You can adjust it for, yeah, this one's totally remodeled. Uh, it, it, it's got a great backyard. You can do some adjustments. Um, and you can do that on the fly on your phone and go, uh, yeah, it looks like it's you know within 20,000 of being you know, plus or minus. It's probably not price bad. So RPR and get the mobile uh, and you, it's, a, it's, paid, it's free. You get it. I mean, you pay for it in your, in your dues. So here's the non-mobile version. So we're going to look at this property. Uh, sold at 752. The Ritzer property estimate was 728. Uh, refined value included improvements to the redone kitchen and a new floor. So 757. I sold at 752. Um, so it's pretty good data, and it's pretty quick because you can type that address in on your phone, and you can get to this just as quick as I did on my laptop. It's going to display a little differently, but uh, make sure through Armless you go get RPR and then get the mobile once you, once you have your login information you want to go to the to the mobile if you want to catch me in the hall or something for five ten minutes we can help you get that set up but um, unfortunately I just don't have time to go into that that was kind of a bonus one I had and but it's something I use regularly when I'm out about also when you're out driving flex is not a really good you know what's that house across the street cost doesn't have a good geolocator. RPR does. Here's where I am, what's, what's around me, boom. Oh, that house, uh, it's, it's showing as a AWC, because our RPR will show you on your mobile device, the price, the agent, so you can get the contact information for the agent if you need to call them to try to get in. And, you know, most of the time when that happens, someone, they go, well, that's because that's only a three bedroom house, and you told me you had to have four minimum. That's why it wasn't, because people go, they, you're driving around. If you haven't had this yet, you will drive around and go, well, you didn't show me that one. That looks really pretty from the outside. I'm like, well, it's because you told me you had to have a pool and you had to have four bedrooms. And this is a three bedroom, no pool. And it, here's the price, but that, you know, doesn't meet what you want. But you can have that quickly at the palm of your hand with the RPR mobile. So that being said, any questions? I hope added some value to, you know, I'm gonna hit this stop record. Thoughts, questions. I was just trying to give you a quick overview. Mostly showing time. I mean, mostly sky slope because I get a lot of questions on that. A uh, couple of tips in armless. A couple of tips on uh, the showing time. Extra features that are in there. You know, we all click on it to show a house, but we don't realize the other pieces go back in there and look at the other things you can do in there. Um, you can actually set showing time up to call your client to see or, or text your client to see it. Two o'clock is an okay time to show. I usually like to stay in the middle of that and I have them text me and then I check with my client. But there may be some clients or that you could, you know, you want to do that. Just they can get the text from showing time. Is it okay to show your house at two? And they can simply hit wire in. Boom. And you don't even have to be in that loop. Um, it's probably, you know, something that works, you know, if you know you're gonna be out of town for a day or two, you might switch over to that just for that day, explain it to your client. 
four shoes, one heat. I like being more hands on, more white glove, and, and playing, keep keep myself in the middle. And you know, sometimes uh, you want to show your value, and that's a good way to stay in the middle of that. But it is available. Um, that's all.